All right, so I thought I'd get back to some redline restorations. This is the Rocket by Baby from 1973. The original Rocket by Baby came out in 1971 and 72. This is actually the shell promotional version of the 1971 car. In 1973, Mattel hooked up with Shell Oil to sell chopped down versions of Hot Wheels cars at Shell gas stations. If you purchase $3 in gas, you could buy a car for 69 cents. Mattel produced 10 cars for the promotion, including this one you see here. The cars were modified and cheapened from their earlier counterparts, with moving parts removed along with any gimmicks that the car might have had. For example, the original Rocket by Baby had a gimmick where you could pull the tailpipe in the back and it would open up air intakes on the side. This feature was removed in the promotional vehicle and replaced with some air vents. Of course, the cars were painted in enamel instead of the iconic Spectraflame cars of the past, but I can't nick them for this as all Hot Wheels in 1973 were painted in enamel, as the Spectraflame era died in 1972. The promotion was considered a success for Shell Oil, but not so for Mattel. In fact, 1973 is probably the closest Hot Wheels ever came to being cancelled, as at this point it had endured three years of decline. I should note here that even if it had died then, it still would have been a raging success overall. Back in the 60s when the cars first came out, it was considered a huge success if your toy line was able to endure two years before becoming completely irrelevant. Someone at Mattel must have really believed in the Hot Wheels line and kept it going despite all indications showing the line was declining a decision that might have paid off in the end. One of the other major changes in 1973, and really the focus of this video, is the change of wheels from the capped closed style to the open wheel style that is used still today. And this change has made restoring these cars much more difficult due to the fact that you would have to restore the wheels or steal new ones from modern reproductions of classic vehicles. This can be very expensive as Mattel tends to charge more for these classic reproductions. So the main thing I want to showcase in this video is how I plan to get around this issue for these redline cars with open style wheels. But before I get ahead of myself, let's take a look at getting this body cleaned up and painted. You can see some of the oxidation where the paint has worn off. Luckily the oxidation is not all that bad, so I can easily remove it with some light sanding with 600 grit sandpaper and some 4 rot steel wool. Once this is done, I can then zinc plate the car to brighten the metal. Since these cars were painted in enamel, Mattel didn't bother with zinc plating them. I want to reproduce the Spectraflame look for this car, so zinc plating is in order to brighten the metal as raw Zamac is much darker than zinc. After I plate the body, I'll go over it with a brass brush and some steel wool to clean up the zinc layer and then polish the car with a polishing wheel and some polishing compound. This will get a near mirror shine on the surface of the metal. After I've cleaned the body off with some mineral spirits and some soap and water, I can begin the painting process. I'll be using my new method of painting these cars and applying a light metal flake base coat to give the metal surface a granular look just like the original Spectraflame cars have. Again, it's very important to keep this layer as light and as even as possible. After this dries, I can then paint on my urethane layer of light blue. I'll leave links to these paints below if you want to give them a try. After about 5 coats, I'll set the body aside and allow the paint to fully cure, about 48 hours for this car. While I'm waiting for that, I'll go ahead and start working on the base, starting with removing the old wheels and axles. I find the fastest way of doing this is with a cutoff wheel mounted in my Dremel. I just slowly move the wheel over the die cast metal, slowly removing it until the axle can just pop out. I then repeat on the back axle. Looking at the base, I can see quite a bit of oxidation. The best way to remove this for me is to drop it in my electro polishing rig to remove all of it in a few seconds. Here you can see how that turned out. There's always some residue on the metal surface covering the polished metal, so I'll need to remove that with a brass brush or some 4 rot steel wool. After a good brushing, I'll have a nice and shiny base. Now I want to take a look at the rocket engine. It's strange to think about, but this engine probably has the same amount of metal in it as most cars Mattel makes today. Just like the base, it has a layer of oxides that need to be removed. And just like I did before, I'll remove the oxides with the electro polisher to get to this point. Next, I'll sand down the engine and remove the mold lines. You might think, why remove the oxides and then sand when you could just sand from the start? It's because the oxides are extremely hard as in rock whale hardness, and require a lot of work to remove with sandpaper, while removing them with chemical means takes only seconds with no effort. After the sandpaper, I'll move to 4 rot steel wool to shine up the metal, 
and make sure all of my previous sanding lines are removed. I can then wash the part in some degreaser and then drop it into my zinc plating bath to apply a zinc layer to the metal. Small parts like this plate rather fast, so I only had to have it in there for about 10 minutes at 0.6 volts. After that, I pulled out the part and washed it again to remove any plating solution and then allowed it to dry. I then went over the part again with some steel wool to shine up the zinc layer. Once I was sure of my plating job, I then polished the engine to a mirror shine with a polishing wheel and some polishing compound. This is not how the original engine looked, but I really couldn't help myself. Ever since I found this car, I wanted to see what it would look like with a polished engine and a new paint job, so I'm okay with deviating from the original in order to satisfy my curiosity. Alright, so now I'm at the main point of this video, which is about these open style wheels. Mattel made these till the end of the Red Line era, around 1977, and then began the Blackwall era, a subject for another time. After 1977, they only ever made these for reproduction or anniversary cars. So restoring a car past 1972 can be a pretty expensive endeavor if you can't use the original wheels. Cars prior to 1973 had either cap style wheels or bearing style. Both of these styles are replaceable with modern reproductions that you can buy from places like eBay or the Redline shop. What I wanted to do is come up with a way to utilize these pre-existing resources to replace these open style wheels. The best way I could come up with this was to reproduce the back plate to the cap style wheels in Tinkercad and then 3D print them off on my resin 3D printer. Now I chose to go with the cap style wheels here because they one, match up to the original style wheels and two, the back plate was easier to print given its size. I did have one issue in that the 3D printer was unable to print the opening in the back plate for the wire axle, so I had to hand drill them but I think I can fix this in future versions. Another change I made was to shrink the back plate so that the caps made contact with the ground. The original cars actually rode on the back plates and then the caps never touched any surface. I would guess this is because they would probably come off at high speeds if the cars were running on the caps. I shrank mine down to ride on the caps because resin is rather brittle and I worry about it shattering if I drop the car on any hard surface. The caps are made of plastic and would be able to absorb the shock. I'm still at the early stages of, well, what we'll call prototyping the design. But what would really be nice is if the places that produce the caps could also start producing the back plates too. Or maybe some do and I just don't know about them. But this turned out to be a rather simple solution to the open style wheel issue. Once I get all the kinks worked out, I'll do a dedicated video on it. But for now, I wanted to get others' opinions on it. So moving on to the windshield, you can probably see that this one is in pretty good shape. Just a few very small scratches that I can easily buff out with some Meguiar's plastic polish and a buffing wheel. Nothing too major here. The last touch I plan to add is to paint in the engine intake and nozzle. I think it's called a nozzle. I'm no rocket scientist, so how would I know? This is easily done with an airbrush, apply paint to the recessed areas, and then use a finger or towel to wipe away the overspray. Then set it aside to dry. Alright, all that's left now is to put the car back together and see how it turned out. Now I ran through most of the steps in this video rather quickly. If you are unfamiliar with any step here, I'll add a playlist to the end of the video that you can click on with all the videos breaking these steps down. I do have an updated how-to video I'm planning to bring out soon. That will go over each step in a very thorough manner, but I'm still working on a few things before I make that video. I do this format to keep my regular viewers from getting bored as most cars have the same steps with minor differences. And by focusing on these differences, I think that makes for a much more enjoyable viewing. Alright, so what about this model? Well, I love the car and to some degree like this cheap inversion. The only major design flaw I see is by removing the gimmick they left a gaping hole in the back of the car. Looking at the car from the side, you can see right through the back wheel wells to the other side. I personally dislike being able to see through any car. It just comes off as cheap. But other than that, I'm really pleased with how this one turned out. The paint came out fine. I didn't need to polish it. The wheels turned out great, especially once the car's all together. I know not everyone is a big fan of repo wheels, but there's no way I can restore the original wheels on this car to anything close to the repo ones. And by using the method I have shown here, I can now restore any redline car from the redline era, which was not easy to do before. But of course, I'm always interested in your thoughts, so please comment below. And hey, 
As always, thanks for watching.